So, watching Blue Lock has made me... <laughs> okay, hold on. Can we just mention how dirty they did this man? This man was so hyped up only for him to go out like such a side character. I'm gonna admit it. I was fooled. Absolutely tricked and bamboozled. I, with every inch of my soul, believed that Kira was gonna be Isagi's main rival or something. I mean, look at the poster. A white-haired man is standing right behind Isagi. That is the most rival thing you can ever do, and I thought that was Kira. But I forgot this was anime, and having white hair isn't that exclusive of a thing. Cause this turned out to be Nagi, who ends up being 84 times cooler. We'll get to that monster later though. What sucks though is that Kira seemed like such a chill guy. He even made solid points when Betelgeese, uh, uh, I mean Ego, was explaining what Blue Lock even was. And the fact that he had the highest rank in Room Z, I thought he was gonna be nasty on the field, man. But we didn't even get to see that, because Bajira decided to destroy this man's entire career. Getting kicked out of Blue Lock means you can never play for Japan's team, meaning no World Cup for you. And this completely destroyed Kira. It's gonna be a common theme in the show, but basically everyone on here looks like a main character. This is a really special smart way to showcase the show's philosophy on having immense pride in yourself. If you want to be the best, then be greedy and just be better than everyone else. No one looks like a side character because everyone wants to be the protagonist. They want to be him. Capital H, him. So it hits harder too because when characters are kicked out of the show, they're recognizable, so it's gonna hit. No one is a better example of this than Kira. Look at him. He looks like the ultimate main character. But the danger duo Isagi and Batra decide that, nah, he's irrelevant. Japan's national treasure my ass you couldn't even last three episodes i was really hesitant when starting the show but this was a genius beginning the main value preached by blue lock is that being the best requires needing an ego no not just some ego but all the ego in the world take the opportunity to be the best even if it means taking it away from others and this was displayed perfectly by asagi taking out kira kira looks like and probably acts like a main character but he didn't fight hard enough and that one mistake was all it took isagi proved that white-haired anime boys simply cannot beat the Kirito haircut. Typically, sports anime is all about working to be the best version of yourself, but doing that with your team. Usually, there are character arcs where a player starts out as a selfish, egotistical guy who doesn't take his teammates' limits into account, then yells at them for not being good enough, but eventually completely learns the value of proper teamwork and working with your teammates instead of thinking for yourself. This was straight up Kageyama's arc in Haikyuu. The king on the court was criticized for constantly yelling at his teammates to be as good as him, but eventually turned things around when his time at Karasuno taught him not to be selfish and to create chemistry with his teammates. This isn't the case of Blue Log though. You think these guys are gonna work as a team? Well, yeah, sure, but only to boost themselves. Bro, Isagi was called a downright pussy for passing the ball, <laughs> even though passing the ball was the right move at the moment, because there was no other way to score. But everyone basically said to him, if you needed to pass to score that goal, then you're weak. You don't deserve to be a striker. Damn. <laughs> See, shit like that just proved to me how different and unique Blue Lock's approach is in the sports genre. Some people may argue that other shows do use this philosophy of you yourself being the best, like Hajime no Ippo or Baki, but those are fighting solo sports. You're on your own, of course you're gonna want to be better than everyone else. But man, soccer is a team game, so seeing these guys have a whole battle royale so that they could have their own main character moment is wild. Also, yes, I called it soccer, not football. Shut up. Fall 2022 came in with some bangers. Some stuff were new seasons of already loved shows while others were highly anticipated shows that were hyped up because of its manga. Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man is that others. So you can imagine my surprise when a random sports anime starts rushing down the middle gaining just as much popularity as them. I was super taken aback. Everyone who watched the show described it as hype incarnate, which I gotta say is badass. I held off on it for a really long time though, because there's no way I was gonna prioritize a random sports anime over all these other options. But honestly, I think I was just scared that Blue Lock might be better than Haikyuu. The reason this stopped me from watching the show initially was because Haikyuu means a lot to me personally. It was the first show to genuinely inspire me to a point where I actually went out and did something different. Watching that show was the beginning of a massive self-improvement journey that I had started back in high school. To me, Haikyuu is my definitive sports anime, and it is to a lot of people too, so when I heard that this new show might just be better, I simply didn't want to tarnish the image of my favorite sports anime. But I realized one thing. 
I realized that it's not that deep, so I ended up watching the show. And by God, I'm happy I did. People were not at all exaggerating. This show brought my hype levels to an all-new maximum. I didn't know seeing a bunch of men kicking around balls would excite me so much. Seriously though, this show hypes me up more than a bunch of other battle shonens I've seen. At first glance, Isagi seems like the most generic MC ever, but that's not the case at all. He loves soccer so much, it's actually infectious. I barely even knew him back then, but his loss at the first episode because he chose to pass made me scream was even on the varsity team in high school, by the way. <laughs> Slight flex. But I could relate to the pain so damn much. In sports, everything you do has to be done instantly. The only decisions you can make are split-second decisions, which increases the pressure dramatically. So when you immediately witness your decision being the complete wrong one, it hurts, man. It hurts. Isagi quickly became a ridiculously relatable character for me. And while I love him and will forever cheer him on, oh my god, I love a lot of the other characters too. Bro, Bajrua is such a quirky little brat, but I love him. Not only is he such a wild card both in soccer and in real life, but he's so damn impressive to watch too. His main skill is dribbling, which was something I personally never got good at, so watching him just blast through people while being such a demon about it is beyond fun. Bro, that one moment when he dribbled past the entire team and scored completely by himself was crazy. He's so damn good at the game and he's got such a fun-ass personality to boot. He's the perfect guy to be in Blue Lock, cause while well, everyone just wanted to survive and the first game of tag, Bachura wanted to dominate. Instead of going for the weaker players and having one of them be eliminated, Bachura chose to beat the best player there. He was able to judge Asagi's character instantly and knew that he was just like him. They both want to go for the top spot. I swear, Asagi and Bachura as a pair are single-handedly the greatest and scariest duo ever made. Chiguri is also up there as one of my favorite characters because he came in bringing one of the best episodes ever aired on television. His episode where he decided to stop holding back and unleash the animation was hype birthing. That's not a thing, but he made it a thing. Guys, he's just so fast. There are a lot of other characters that I do enjoy, but I'm gonna get to the main one. Nagi. This little shit was who Kira was used as bait for. I've seen a lot of badass characters in my time, and you'd think I'd get used to them, but in his first introduction, he was in frame with two other people, but you could just tell he was the main guy. When someone's being lazy and not giving a shit, oh, you, you know he's him. Nagi, while being piggybacked by Ryo, by the way, said with a straight face to Kuan, you need all this to win? Huh. Must be a hassle to be so weak. God damn! And he wasn't all talk either. Everything he did afterwards was just, oh, it was unfair. After effortlessly copying Team Z's play, which Team Z had to strategize to make, by the way, Nagi asked Daddy Rayo how many goals he should make before he could take a nap, and Rayo so confidently is just like, oh, like, uh, like four more, I guess. Like, four? You know he said that with no doubt, too, because Nagi could just effortlessly do that. This bitch caught his phone with his foot. The phone fell from the top of a staircase, and he jumped down to catch it with his foot. Nagi's just different, bro. The only way our main crew could even win against them was by stopping Rayo from talking to Nagi. Like, bro, we know he's your main weapon, so we're gonna shut this down. What was kind of unfair, too, was the fact that, again, they really couldn't beat Nagi and Rayo's team, so they had to resort to fouling Nagi by straight up tackling him. There were no excuses there. That was a direct red card to Kuan, and th that's valid, man. Nagi was about to win it for his team, and you just tackle him? My god. Also, quick side note, I find it really funny that the first person that's fast enough to keep up with Chigiri is just a straight up Ida. Man, this show is just a massive crossover because we got Ichigo, Kirito, and Urza Scarlet all here. Clearly, with Rin being the number one player in all of Blue Lock, he's definitely gonna be a problem. Like, the way he kicked that one ball up and then the other ball up and they both hate each other? That, that is not human. But a thing I'd like to highlight is the fact that Isagi and Bachira are an unstoppable duo, but adding Nagi into the mix? Holy shit, I've never jumped out of my seat faster. That was amazing. And <laughs> Nagi leaving Rayo was the funniest shit ever, by the way. I'm absolutely loving the show so far, and I really can't find too many faults in the show overall. I'm beyond excited for more episodes, and I guess that leaves us with one final question. Do I like Blue Lock more than Haikyuu? And if I was gonna be honest, I-